In this video I will demonstrate how the pattern that you see on this screen is built into your systematic thought process and so by default also your reality. Give me just 10 minutes and I guarantee you, you will see and learn something you never knew about numbers as well as yourself. There is a concept that exists that has been referred to as the holy grail of knowledge. This missing link is said to be the generating function of the universe as well as the concept that would unify all concepts. This knowledge has been sought after for thousands of years by countless individuals and organizations. It has been described by many different figures throughout history, from the likes of Euclid, Plato, Kepler, Descartes, to Einstein, Tesla, Planck, Gates, Higgs, and Lisi. It has also been illustrated in great detail through visionary artist Alex Gray's work. The majority have been taught to believe that access to these ideas are out of reach to most and almost impossible to understand and perceive for those privileged enough to witness this knowledge. What if I told you that this secret lies within you? Yes, you. What if I told you that all of this information is built into your consciousness and has been since at least the time you were able to count and multiply? In this video I will demonstrate and discuss the following. Geometric infinity. My subjective witnessing of this concept. Numbers without dimensions. The first, second, third, and fourth dimensional shape of numbers. Interdimensional connectedness. The infinite connection. Questions for math and science about consciousness itself, the spiritual, religious, esoteric and occult, artistic and abstract, my vision of the future. My goal in sharing this concept is to spark conversations about this subject for all. Here is my story of coming to this realization. Hours after perceiving an internal flash of light as the result of a chiropractic adjustment, I sat down and began having an internal subjective experience in which my consciousness eventually witnessed all numbers in states of hyperdimensional infinite interconnectedness. Witnessed as an indescribably intricate, geometrically and dimensionally infinite shape weaving simultaneously into and out of itself as well as higher and lower dimensions. The perception of this hyperdimensional geometry of the mind allowed me to retain what I have witnessed and left me with a geometric understanding of how to objectively describe it. Minutes after my subjective experience, I wrote down a single page of numbers. After almost 13 years, starting with nothing but an internal experience and a single sheet of paper, I am now able to objectively express and share the geometric and dimensional shape of numbers as well as the nature of geometric infinity. Numbers without dimensions A point is a geometric object having no dimensions and no property other than its location. Any solitary number, no matter how many digits, is simply a point. The first dimensional shape of numbers, points and lines. A line is a geometric object which is a set of points that have one dimension, length, but no width or height. When comparing numbers to a geometric line, we see that they too are a set of points that also make a line. Both the geometric line and numbers can be imagined to extend in both directions infinitely. Looking at the numbers from the original sheet of paper now transferred to a spreadsheet, we can see that each of these rows of numbers creates a geometric line. The second dimensional shape of numbers, multiplication. When examining the spreadsheet, we can see that the array of numbers is a multiplication chart comprised of, in this case, 20 lines which contain 20 different points. Taking a closer look at the chart, we can now see that in this case, there are 4 blocks of numbers that when reduced only to the ones digit, become identical arrays of numbers. 
examining a solitary block of this infinitely repeating array of single digits, we can see an amazing pattern begin to emerge by extracting each group of like digits individually. Amazed with the patterns that emerged, I shared the expressed patterns with loved ones and a few friends. Not knowing what to make of it, myself included, I tried to think of new ways to further express the previously witnessed geometric patterns. At this point, I was stumped for over a decade. Then I learned about this. The Flower of Life. The Flower of Life is a very ancient and well-known geometric pattern. When the outer circle of the Flower of Life is removed, and the pattern is continued outward to complete the previously cut off edges of the pattern, it looks like this. Embedded inside the now expanded pattern is a 13 circle layout called the Fruit of Life. When a line is drawn to the center point of each circle from the center point of each circle, a shape emerges called Metatron's Cube. It has been demonstrated that nested inside of Metatron's Cube are the five platonic solids. After learning the technique of connecting center points to center points with straight lines, my heart began pounding inside my chest. I immediately ran to my closet, pulled my papers out of a box, and began connecting like numbers using lines. Shocked at what I had just drawn, I stayed up all night and waited for the art supply store to open. I purchased grid paper, a compass and a ruler, and redrew all the shapes with more precision. At this point, I could hardly believe what I was seeing. The more I examined the two-dimensional digits, the more I began to envision new ways to visually express and combine the polar opposites, creating new two-dimensional forms in the process. All at the same time, inverted, when zooming out and taking a look at all 10 digits, I noticed that all the shapes had a polar opposite. I also began to realize that in the two dimensional digits, a new system arose in which there are now odds consisting of four points, evens consisting of 12 points, and neutrals which don't fall into either previous category. Taking a look at the one-dimensional classification of odds and evens, we see an alternating pattern. Taking a look at a second-dimensional plane of numbers classified in the one-dimensional pattern, it appears this way. Except now that it's two-dimensional, the neutral numbers emerge. The symmetrical polar opposites made me think about electricity, and the thought of DC and AC current led to the idea of alternating connecting lines of polar opposite points. For example, if we assign A to the number 1 and B to the number 9, and we view our A's and our B's simultaneously, we see that they are directly connected to only like digits A's to A's and B's to B's. If we alternate the connection, connecting A's to B's, the two shapes become one and a new two-dimensional shape in the pattern emerges. Again, zooming out, if we apply the same technique to all polar opposites taking each opposite shape, adding the two together and making the alternation, these new shapes emerge. Taking the newly forged odds and evens and adding the two together and making the alternation to these shapes, two more shapes emerged. The resulting seven expressions reminded me of a concept I have seen before called the chakras. My desire to further understand and express even more geometry on higher dimensional planes was swelling inside my consciousness and ready to burst out in the form of geometric expressions. The third dimensional shape of numbers, cubing the square. If we take our 2D array of numbers and put it on six sides of a cube, one side looks like this, 
and the other side looks like this. If you could see through the cube, it would look like this. Taking the two-dimensional number one and placing it on the cube, it would look like this. If you could see through the cube, it would look like this. If all of the center points of the number one were connected, it would look like this. This is a representation of the three-dimensional shape of the number one. Repeating the steps of taking the two-dimensional shapes of numbers and applying them to all six sides of a cube and tediously connecting the center points of like numbers, I began to reveal all ten digits one through nine plus zero in 3D. Astonished by the realization that these three-dimensional shapes of numbers existed, made my brain almost explode. I was very amazed and confused at the same time. Did these shapes previously exist or did I just make them up? As I continued drawing, I was wondering what did these shapes represent? Could these expressions help bring my thoughts of three-dimensional numbers into our 3D space-time reality? Could I someday hold these shapes in my hands? Would my expressed ideas actually become 3D objects? Another geometric phenomenon that I noticed is that each color-coded point inside of the cube that the shapes were connected to each individually created a tile that when used in a tessellation pattern created its own specific textured fabric-like pattern that could be tessellated into infinity. Examining these patterns individually, I began to quickly realize that these tessellations created stunning detailed visual geometry and that cycling through the patterns consecutively created some pretty amazing visualizations of this number system. These patterns began to remind me of the subjective witnessing of the hyperdimensional geometry and the spectacularly infinite color and motion of the experience. These tessellations also gave another clear example of the infinite nature of each number individually. Just so we're clear up to this point, a one-dimensional system of numbers, which are all points on a line, seemingly a very simple process of plus one counting that we all learned as kids by virtue of the one-dimensional system's existence, generates a two-dimensional system of numbers, which is actually something else that you learned as a kid as well, the multiplication chart. Making a simplified version of the multiplication chart by dropping all numbers except the ones digit on each point reveals a pattern in which you can now see the same chart in a way that you have never looked at it before. This newfound simplified perspective allows you to visually see the second dimensional shape of numbers by isolating each like digit individually then connecting them all with straight lines from each point to each point. Now, taking that two-dimensional plane of numbers and putting it onto six sides of a cube, you would then be able to see a pattern revealed that allows you to visually see the third-dimensional shape of numbers. Comparing the first, second, and third-dimensional progressions of a base 10 system, we get a simultaneous look at the digits from all three dimensional perspectives for the first time. All of these shapes are following the same rules as the shapes in simple geometry. Points, lines, planes, and cubes. Seeing these three systems together for the first time was astonishing for me. Why haven't I ever seen these forms before? With all the advancements the human race has made by applying the first and second dimensional shape of number systems to the physical world and everyday life, what could be possible if we understood and applied this third dimensional system to everyday life? 
Then I began to think it would only be logical to think that logical thinking itself takes place inside of these geometric spaces, right? There was also another thought that just kept getting louder. What about the fourth dimension? The fourth dimensional shape of numbers, hyperdimensional shapes. The tesseract hypercube is a four dimensional cube and the face of hyperdimensional shapes. It can be described as a cube inside of a cube possessing toroidal motion in which it moves through itself in a type of infinite rotation. Taking another look at the three dimensional shapes of numbers, I began to notice that just like the tesseract hypercube is a cube inside of a cube, that the 3D shapes of numbers also possess smaller replica shapes of itself inside of itself. It was obvious that these 3D shapes were fractal in nature, and, in my opinion, if given the same properties as the hypercube, could be set into four-dimensional motion. This visualization led to the thought that if there is such thing as a four-dimensional cube, a tesseract, a five-dimensional cube, a pentaract, a six-dimensional cube, a hexaract, and so on, then the same must be for these shapes. The realization soon set in that there was this infinite onion-like layered geometric structure that spanned all dimensions for every number, and that most of us have only seen or experienced a single two-dimensional side of this particular 9x9 nine nine dimensional layer that we most commonly use. My mind rapidly flooded with the idea that there was an interdimensional connectedness with each number throughout all dimensions spanning into infinity, and that I could express it using geometry. Interdimensional Numbers – The Infinite Connection a simplified explanation of a base count is simply where the zero is placed in the count. Each base count then builds upon itself repeating its measurement slash frequency of digits. Example in one dimension, a base 6 versus a base 10 counted out to 30 shows the zeros occur at a higher frequency in the base 6 with the zeros highlighted. Now, in two dimensions comparing the same two base counts, we can see that there is a higher frequency of zeros in the base 6 covering 16% of the chart, compared to base 10 in which zero covers 9.87% of the chart. Now let's talk about the link between two dimensional base counts and geometry itself. In this visualization, we will use these two squares and determine their size by measurement. In this case, we will use this small black square as our measuring tool. When measuring the two squares with our measuring device, we can determine, based on our measurements, that the left square is two black squares long and two black squares wide, and the right one is three by three. These separate measurement slash dimensional frequencies are representing all the same information, just on a different frequency. In this case, the information is that both the shapes are squares of different dimension slash measurement. And the frequency of measurement is for the left square 2x2 two two, and the right square 3x3. Three three. Now, in comparison to math, and more specifically the multiplication chart, we can see that these two systems have the same properties with added information. In the case of the multiplication chart, the measurement slash dimension is the base count and the information inside of the chart is its frequency. Each base count contains its own set of unique information, which is the frequency of numbers in the chart. As we progress through the dimensions of the base counts, we can see the frequencies become higher as they progress to base 10 where its two-dimensional frequency of digits is revealed. Now, looking at a base 27 multiplication chart in the same way as we did the base 10, we can see the same information represented on a higher dimensional plane at greater frequency. I chose to use base 27 because the English alphabet has 26 letters, plus the zero that naturally occurs inside the system makes it a base 27. In reality, the system is infinite, but for this demonstration I will use base 27. 
As you can see, there are distinct 2D line shapes for all digits, and that like all previous dimension slash base counts, each of these shapes has a polar opposite. When these base 27 digits are placed onto six sides of a cube, each digit creates its own unique tile that can also be tessellated into infinity. And when running through the progressions of these tiles, we see a very similar visual geometric progression on a higher dimension and frequency. After creating the six-sided cube with each digit color-coded, I quickly realized that it would be almost impossible to connect these shapes using straight lines by hand. There's just too much information to contain on a paper. I knew that in the future I would need help rendering these shapes and their dimensions inside the vast digital space of a computer, but for now I will just use the color-coded tiles to continue explaining. Now I want to explain the connection of all numbers, both positive and negative, and the frequency in which they occur, and all base counts and their dimensional measurements. Looking at each base count 1 to 27 individually, we can identify the points for the number 1 in each separate numerical slash dimensional plane. Each of these systems is in itself a complete number system. Any of these systems can be used to multiply accurately. Now, let's talk about the interdimensional connectedness of numbers, starting with the number 1. Visualizing each of the numerical slash dimensional planes beginning to stack up on top of each other, the most shocking of all patterns emerged. This is what the positive number one looks like in all measurements and frequencies combined base counts 1 to 27 in two dimensions. I repeated this process for each digit 0 through 26. I got the idea when I remembered how Benoit Mandelbrot simultaneously applied all of the Julia sets creating the Mandelbrot set. In this visualization, it is important to remember that just as the one-dimensional system of numbers is imagined in both the positive and negative to extend into infinity, so too are these representations. In geometry, a dimension can only be perceived in between two polar opposite reference points for the respective dimensions. In the case of the cube, there are two opposing sides and three sets of polar opposites. After rendering all of the digits 0 through 26, I proceeded to repeat the process of adding polar opposites to the pattern. These patterns reminded myself, as well as many who I shared the images with, of Native American and other indigenous tribal textiles, baskets, and tribal art. Cycling through these patterns rendered a more accurate picture of my internal subjective witnessing of the supersymmetrical hyperdimensional infinite geometry. For me, there was no doubt what the next logical step was, so I put the pattern on three sides of a cube. Step by step, I felt like I was getting even closer to being able to express what I had witnessed. For me, this was the moment where it all came together. When I placed the pattern on six sides of a cube and began cycling through the interdimensional shapes of numbers, I was entranced in the detail and beauty of the patterns. I felt like I had finally expressed the witness geometric patterns in as clear of a way as I possibly could. I was finally able to describe the fact that I have perceived that my consciousness was non-local and that it was actually an infinitely geometric structure on a higher dimensional plane, and that when we think about something it is not actually taking place inside of our brains, but that our brain is simply transmitting and receiving our consciousness to and from the higher dimensional plane to our first person perspective. It is apparent that these infinite geometric structures are present in all systems, numbers, alphabets, music notes, and any type of measurement or frequency. In other words, anything with a beginning, middle, and an end contains these structures. Does this prove that the finite is simply a measured portion of infinity? And more importantly, who is it that is measuring? 
And measuring what? The fundamental tools of all math and science is numbers. These numbers have been used countless times to prove the laws of physics and mathematics. It has now come to the point where scientists and mathematicians are using numbers to try to define the fundamental building blocks of nature. Could it be that the tools that they are using to seek the building blocks of nature are what define nature itself? In other words, do the answers they are looking for lie in the tools they are already using to look in the first place? Will scientists and mathematicians come full circle and find that simple counting, the thing that sparked all math and science, is the answer to some of nature's greatest mysteries? Carl Sagan said, We can judge our progress by the courage of our questions and the depth of our answers. Our willingness to embrace the truth rather than what feels good. So, with the truths I have shared with you, I am going to ask many questions. I hope together we can come up with the answers. First we'll start with math and science. Einstein said, as far as the laws of mathematics refer to reality, they are not certain. And as far as they are certain, they do not refer to reality. Could the true infinite nature of numbers be the paradox he is referring to? Could this geometry be the field identified by Max Planck that he referred to as the existence of what must be a conscious and intelligent mind, which he called the matrix? Nikola Tesla said, My brain is only a receiver. In the universe there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know it exists. Could this geometric information be related to the core he described? Could it be that consciousness itself is a type of digital information system? Are these infinite structures and their fractal nature the underlying cause of the measurement problem itself? Is this geometry the generating function of the universe? Stephen Hawking, how do the ideas of geometric infinity compare to what you call the mind of God? And where does the infinite structure fit into your elegant equation of everything? Sylvester James Gates Jr. Does this relate to the computer coding embedded in string theory equations? And what relation do these systems have with supersymmetry? Neil deGrasse Tyson Could these patterns be used to more accurately measure and map space and time, as well as describe black holes? Garrett Lisi you said the Higgs field is described as a geometric particle field that gives masses to all known elementary particles and it's exactly the missing puzzle piece we need to tie everything together. Where do these geometries fit into what the fundamental building blocks of nature are? Could these demonstrated geometries be the missing puzzle piece that will help define the Higgs field? And how does this geometry compare to that of E8? Dr. Philip Emigawali, a type of supercomputer model has been demonstrated to occur inside of a hypercube. Could these shapes also have supercomputer models embedded in their shapes? And could this information also lead to new forms of supercomputers? Brian Green, is this the information that scientists call a quantum hologram? And could this be the theoretical two-dimensional information encoded on a black hole like a disk? Miriam Mirzakhani. Could these systems be used to make more contributions to the field of geometry and dynamic systems? Dr. Amika Swami. You said that we can make sense of the world only if we base the world on consciousness and that the world is made of consciousness. Quantum physics makes this as clear as daylight. What do the demonstrated geometries have to do with consciousness itself? And are these structures applicable to quantum physics? Nick Bostrom, where do these concepts fit into the simulation argument you describe? Do the demonstrated geometric patterns suggest that there is also computer coding embedded in all forms of systematic information? 
Are these shapes the underlying structures of the various resolution slash divisions of space in a fractal structure density that Nassim Haramin describes that make up physical reality? Benoit Mandelbrot, how could these ideas be applied to the rendering of lifelike computer 3D graphics? And what other similarities do you see between these geometric structures and the Mandelbrot set? Can a 3D computer model of these shapes be built out into a million layers or a billion layers? What would those shapes look like and what could the information be used for? Could these patterns be used to develop new forms of 3D or 4D computer encryption systems? Cymatics experts, are these patterns simply the cymatics or vibrational waves of numbers themselves? Noam Chomsky, could these structures be applied to your theory of universal grammar? World leaders, could these shapes somehow lead to a more precise form of communication therefore foregoing the often misinterpreted subjective translations from language barriers and cultural differences that can often escalate to physical conflicts. Do these geometric patterns possess the structured balance necessary to construct non-monopolized, environmentally safe, low-cost free energy devices? Microbiologists how do these structures relate to those of viruses and other microbiological geometric observations made in the natural world? What impact could these structures have on the future development of nanotechnologies and nanostructures? Trigonometry experts, can these geometric shapes be translated into formula math? And if so, applied mathematicians, what could these systems be applied towards? Could we use these systems to better understand the nature of prime numbers and why and how they occur? Could this digital information be used to access what are referred to as wormholes, bending space and time into hyperdimensional shapes for the purpose of interstellar travel? Cedric Villani said, Mathematics is about progress and adventure and emotion. Cedric, where do you think my emotional adventure of creating this expression fits into the progress of mathematics? And could these ideas be the birth of a theorem? Rene Descartes said, I hope that posterity will judge me kindly, not only as to the things which I have explained, but also to those which I have intentionally omitted, so as to leave to others the pleasure of discovery. Could he have already known about these hyperdimensional geometric structures? And how do these structures relate to his Cartesian coordinate system? Descartes also said, I think, therefore I am. Am what though? Could he have meant that I think, therefore I am? A supersymmetrical, hyperdimensional, geometrically infinite consciousness? Consciousness itself. Science has now come to the point where it is beginning to understand all that is physical. But the mind and consciousness have always simply been an idea or philosophy. Do these geometries help to better understand the structures of systematic thought? And are these geometric patterns in a way a mathematical expression of consciousness itself? Dr. Dan Siegel is this the mechanism that you described that is operating the emergent, self-organizing, relational and embodied process that regulates the flow of energy and information you describe as the systematic mind? Dr. Rick Strassman, could DMT, the spirit molecule, be the access point of these hyperdimensional geometric experiences? Could this give merit to your idea that what is going on is not merely in and of our brains, but does represent stable, freestanding dimensions of reality? David R. Hawkins, does your scale of consciousness measure a person's conscious awareness of this infinite hyperdimensional geometric framework through muscle testing? Daniel Tammet. Are these structures related to the visual synesthesia you describe experiencing when perceiving numbers? Joe Rogan, 
Are these structures the dimensions which are accessed during deep meditations, trances, and the use of psychedelics? Dr. Fred Allen Wolf, could these geometric structures be related to the waves of nothing you describe as probability waves in quantum physics, as well as the primal vibrational stuff that all shamans seem to be in tune with vibrationally? Greg Braden, the fact that you talk about that we may have experiences inside of our bodies that influence the world beyond our bodies through the conduit of what lies in the empty space. Could this information be what lies in the empty space you describe? Sean Webb, how does your flowchart of the human emotions relate to the geometric infinity idea? Could your flowcharts contain the geometric expressions of the emotions? Rupert Sheldrake, could these geometric structures be connected to what you describe as the extended mind, a spread out field outside of your brain? Is it possible that our perceived first person perspective is actually being remotely transmitted and received to and from our hyperdimensional geometric consciousness to our first person perspectives and that most of us have lost the ability to engage, interact, or even perceive this inescapable hyperdimensional witness. Next, let's talk about the spiritual, religious, esoteric, and occult. Scouring math textbooks, libraries, and the internet for any information or depictions of these geometries led to nothing but dead ends. I also sat down with who I considered some of the smartest and most educated people I personally know, none of whom had any reference for what I shared with them, but also had no objections to what I was describing geometrically. After exhausting math and science to the best of my capabilities, I began to wonder, was this some sort of secret knowledge? I began vigorously studying spiritual practices, religious texts, esoteric teachings, and occult rituals. And after countless hours of searching the secrets of these practices and institutions, I was still unable to find previously created information or depictions of these geometries. That leaves me with two possible conclusions. One, I am the first to express these ideas in geometric form. This idea I can accept. New ideas happen all the time, right? Or two, these ideas are kept super secret and not accessible to most people. If this is the case, then my only question is, why? Numbers and geometric patterns are widely used in spiritual, religious, esoteric, and occult rituals. The applied numbers and geometric patterns are said to strengthen the ritual's intended outcome, as well as connect the practitioners to higher dimensions and allow greater access to the non-physical. Religious and spiritual leaders, where does the existence of these geometric structures fit inside your beliefs and faith? Does this geometric system weaken the belief of creationism and intelligent design, or does it further strengthen them? Is the process of witnessing a single number or point progressing into a hyperdimensional infinity the apotheosis of numbers? Are these ideas connected to the esoteric mystery school's approaches to apotheosis and other occult phenomenon? Has this information been produced before and hoarded away in some private library? Could this information be what is commonly referred to as your aura? Could this be the origin for the idea of the chakras themselves? Is this information what is referred to as the spirit or soul? Is this where the information you learn is stored and ultimately the only thing you can take with you into the afterlife? Is this the energy slash information that leaves your body upon death? Is this geometry the information that describes the Merkaba light body? And what does this geometry have to do with the Kabbalic tree of life? Could this be what the ancients describe as the Akashic record? Could the understanding of this information be the access point to the experience the sages describe as oneness, enlightenment, or nirvana? Does this rekindle the idea of Platonism? 
did Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans know, understand, and teach the concepts of geometric infinity? Druvalo Melchizedek, is this geometry related to how to fully activate the pineal gland antennas? And are these shapes considered sacred geometry? John D. and Edward Kelly were said to be in contact with angels through what Vincent Bridges describes as the geometric origin of the Philosopher's Stone. As the Ophanum told Dee and Kelly of the Sophanium language and given them instructions on how to build an astral communication system, could this geometry be used to communicate higher dimensionally? So, if there is this non-local hyperdimensional layer of our consciousness that is mathematically constructed, then these spaces also contain coordinates. Could we sync up our consciousness with others and meet in the hyperdimensional space and time of those coordinates? And is it possible to hyperdimensionally travel together? Is this the mathematic expression of the metaphorically taught alchemy? Artistic and abstract. Drawing for thousands of hours over the last three years, I have produced hundreds of images of these geometric representations that I would like to eventually catalog and share digitally. All of these drawings were for me like the abstract experiments of a mad scientist isolating myself from the outside world and immersing myself in only the thoughts of these numbers and pondering where did this information come from and contemplating how the perception of these thoughts were taking place themselves. Allowing myself to express the explanations using only the tools of geometry, step by step I express the understanding of the progression of a single point, one of the seemingly simplest ideas in the world progressing through my conscious awareness into the most complex idea my mind could possibly visualize on a non-abstract level. For me, these thoughts were like the alchemy of thought itself. Taking the lead of my thoughts and materializing them onto paper was the gold of the geometric alchemy that had taken place. I now had a shareable idea in a mathematic form about my subjective experiencing of this objective hyperdimensional reality. I believe that these drawings are the documented progression of that experimentation leading to the understanding which led to the growth in the ideas that allowed me to express them as I have. When I first drew these numbers I became very possessive of these ideas. I wanted to trademark them all. Then I came to the realization that it would be almost as absurd as trying to trademark 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I knew that these ideas needed to be shared with as many minds as possible. Using the multiplication chart in the same way as the flower of life and using the same techniques used to construct the platonic solids connecting center points to center points using straight lines, I wondered. Could these be considered the platonic solids of numbers? When trying to understand the perception of measurement itself, it is important to note that a square is a square of unknown size until it is perceived to be measured by a conscious observer, witnessing its size and relativity to a predetermined form of measurement. However, in reality, any perceived measurement of one square can be scaled to the size of any other square. Therefore, a square of any size contains all possible measurements of a square. So, that makes the square itself fractal in nature based on the infinitely possible equally squared divisions equating to being mathematically infinite. Do these different sizes of infinity still work together in a structured geometric relationship? Wondering how many different combinations were possible using the 9 by 9 square, I constructed a multiplication chart in every whole number increment. There were three different possibilities, odds, evens, and neutrals. Could these systems be used as a type of mathematical translation device? Thinking that I had covered every possible geometric pattern that could occur in a 9 by 9 square, 
by reducing the digits only to the ones digit. I then thought of another process in which I would add the two digits together until there was only one digit remaining. The result was a completely different set of symmetrical shapes. How do these two systems relate? And are there still more symmetrical systems that fit inside a 9x9 square? I also used the same 2D numbers from the multiplication chart and connected all points with intersecting circles. The results are these beautiful wave-like patterns. Could this be a demonstration of the quantum nature of numbers, acting like both a perceived point or a spread out field of potential points? When drawing an intersecting line through every number originating from the center point, you get a group of lines that looks like this. And if you're drawing intersecting circles from the center outward, you get these circles. Now adding the straight lines and the circles together, the pattern looks like this. And if you rotate the straight lines from the center, you can see the circles relate to the like numbers or polar opposites. The golden ratio, the platonic solids, and the flower of life have been guidelines and inspirations for so many artists. Could these patterns inspire new styles of geometric art? Architects. The golden ratio has been used to construct some of the world's greatest architecture. Could these geometric structures lead to the advent of new architectural designs with greater strength and flexibility? Visionary artist Alex Gray. Could these geometric patterns be connected to the non-physical experiences you portray in your paintings? And could this information be the transcendental object you describe as the vision crystal? Author Dan Brown. What do these geometries have to do with Leonardo da Vinci and his studies? And could these be lost symbols? Will these ideas spark the physiological evolutionary mutation of man, leading to humans that have X-Men-like powers? And if this is the case, what will happen to society as we know it? Just think, if you could telepathically communicate with everyone, what would happen to the cell phone companies? If you could teleport wherever you wanted to go, what would happen to the auto and airline industries? And, even deeper, what if everyone could materialize or simulate their own reality? What would happen to this one? Now, I want to tell you about my vision of the future. I am creating an open source style project for anyone willing to donate time, effort, or resources. I will share this knowledge with as many people as will listen and the best possible contributions for those of you who feel compelled to help can make are number one a video recorded response to what i have shared with you what do you think these ideas could be applied towards i want you to ask your still unasked questions of the experts what questions do you have for me as well has seeing this video led you to a solution for a previously unsolved problem does it spark new ideas for you scientifically, mathematically, perhaps artistically or otherwise? Number two, please share. Do you know anyone that would be interested in seeing this video and possibly giving feedback? Also, if you are a student or colleague of the experts I have posed questions to by name, please pass the link of this video on to them. If there are any other experts in any field that you think would be interested, please share it with them as well. If you speak English in a second language and would be able to translate this project with subtitles, this would greatly help in sharing these ideas worldwide. Number 3. Funding I am reaching out to you in order to have the funds to meet with these experts and video document all of their responses and thoughts on these shared ideas 
in order to produce a feature-length documentary about the evolutionary growth of the systematic mind as well as communication itself. These expert interviews and a mix of your responses, as well as a mix of my graphics and the even more amazing graphics that I know will be created by others, all while documenting the new innovations and breakthroughs that will occur. I am also looking for people that can render these images inside of a computer and people capable of 3D printing these shapes to contact me. All of the collected materials will be combined to create an amazing and thought-provoking film. I believe producing this documentary will be an amazing educational tool for generations to come, as well as the possible birth of a geometrically fueled renaissance. My goal is to make as many people aware of these ideas as possible, and to see if together we can use these ideas to create an evolution in systematic thinking. To find out how to support the future project, please visit geometricinfinity.com. Also, check out geometricinfinity.com to find out how to link your video responses as well as get in contact with myself, the creator, as well as the producers. If you are interested in being interviewed in person for this film, please send a detailed email to info at geometricinfinity.com about why you think you would have a unique perspective or innovative use to demonstrate on camera for the feature length documentary film. Thank you infinitely for watching. I hope that posterity judges me on the fact that I am an artist and a dreamer, a free thinking imaginative consciousness and not a crafted spirit or institutionalized student or scholar. These geometric representations are my attempt at expressing perceived reality.